make sure you hit subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you don't miss any more of my videos and make sure if you like this video you give it a thumbs up. Now getting into today's video, today we're going to be talking about what you need to buy a house in this market right now. I'm specifically located in Huntsville, Alabama and Pensacola, Florida, so feel free to give me a ring if you are looking to buy in any of those areas. Step one, the first thing you're going to need and the first thing you're going to want to look into is let's check out your credit score. So you can check out your credit score by applying for it from your credit company or even sometimes you can kind of see it on your statements. Now that would give you a rough idea and they're going to actually pull a credit report. This may affect your credit score when you go in to get a loan. Check it out, but what is a good credit score? You may be asking. Let me tell you, my friend. So if you're going for an FHA loan, then the credit score you can have on that is around a 580. And if you're going for a conventional loan, then the lowest you can have is a 620. Around the average, you're going to want around a 720, and that's going to give you the best rates and the best flexibility and the lowest down payment. Also, there is loan offices that offer credit recovery systems, and those are pretty cool too. If you're interested in that, just check it out online, and there will be tons of loan offices that would love to help you out with that. Now, step number two on what you need to buy a house right now in today's market. This is going to be your money for your down payment. Now I have great news if you're a college student or if you maybe just be, you're buying your first house and you're not, you don't really have a lot of money saved up, no worries because in your primary residence your down payment can be 100% gifted. 100%. <laughs> Meaning you do not have to be responsible for that down payment and someone can actually gift it to you at closing. And for your down payment percentage, you can have 3.5% down with an FHA loan and you can have around the same percentage with a conventional loan, but the standard on conventional is about 5% on your house payment. Now, on your down payment, you can spend anywhere from 3% to 5% down of your total purchase price. And remember, that could be 100% gifted funds. There's also a lot of first-time home buyer down payment assistant programs. Feel free to shoot me a text or a DM and I'll be happy to hook you up with some in your area. Now, that is not all you're going to need money out of pocket to close. And that's a big misconception and a question I get a lot of the time, is to buy a house, you do not just need to have cash for your down payment. That is just for your loan and for you to be able to get the house. There's also separate closing costs that will be factored into buying the house. Closing costs for buyers do not include realtor commissions, but I will talk about that a little bit more in step four. So for your closing cost, a good estimate way to look at it is it's going to be anywhere from 2 to 5% of your loan amount. And that varies depending on location, but that's normally around what it comes out to. Here in Alabama and even in Florida, you're going to be looking more around that 2% mark. So when you're looking at how much you're going to need at closing, think about your down payment and then add 2 to 5% of your loan amount. So number three is you're going to need your pre-approval. I know we've kind of been talking about it with the down payment and the credit score, but that is going to be put into your pre-approval. In this market especially, with how crazy everything is, you're going to need a pre-approval to even go see a house. So first things first, check out your credit score, look at how much you're going to want to put down on the house and figure out how that's going to work, and then reach out to lending companies. I like to recommend local lenders. I feel like they're really easy to work with, especially if you're a first time home buyer. You can just ring them up. They love to answer questions. And normally the local lenders are really flexible on different aspects of their loan and really work for you. So I always like to recommend that. But if you are in the lower credit score ranges or maybe you'd like a credit recovery program or you're kind of an interesting situation that would need a little more attention, then I would recommend going to a larger company like Regions or something like that and they have a lot more programs. So I always recommend don't just go to one. I know. <laughs> that kind of thing can really help you make sure you get the best rate and especially with the market and how it is right now and interest rates all over the place, that's really useful. 
Now another thing I'm going to talk about with the pre-approval is what they look at and what it means. So the pre-approval is basically going to look at how much money you have a month outside of expenses. So if you have a car payment or if you have something out like that, that is going to be factored into your debt to income ratio, which is basically the amount of money you make a month and then you take out all of the debt you have and they're going to create a ratio and see if what you can qualify for. Now in a conventional loan, it can be around 50% debt to income ratio. So that's also another way that you can see kind of how much you should get pre-approved for and kind of have an idea before going into it. And then you can ask questions if it isn't close to that number and why it's not. I hope that helps. And now we're moving on to the fourth and final phase. So your fourth phase is after you get your pre-approval, you're so excited, you know what you can get a house for and you understand the process. Your fourth step is extremely important right now in this market. And that's to find a qualified agent in your area. I understand I'm an agent, so obviously I'm telling you to do this, but let me help put it into perspective. So what does an agent do and what are the benefits of having one in this market, especially when technology is so readily available for you to find stuff online? Well, I'm here to protect you, the consumer. The major thing that I would say is a benefit of an agent is we're trained in negotiation, we're trained in the law, we understand the contracts and the paperwork, and wording is so important. And a little bit of wording can really screw you in a deal. So it's really important to have someone on your side that can negotiate for you and make sure that you're not getting taken advantage of in this market and you get the best house that you want at the best price and contingencies. Now I'm going to brag on myself here for a bit is that real estate agents bring a lot more to the table than just hooking you up with automatically getting sent things the second they go on the market. You also get a resource that you can ask questions of daily. You can go see the houses when they're getting on the market and you can get offers in before they're sold. And also they can help you find off market properties. Right now, a huge thing I suggest is make sure your buyer's agent is sending out mailers on your behalf. So what does that mean? That means if you have an area, a zip code, and even a neighborhood that you really want to move into, that that agent is working extra hard to see if there's anyone in those areas that want to sell their house or will consider selling it. And that gives you the opportunity to skip all those bidding wars and get a house in the area that you want to be in. I'll tell you more about it in a separate video. Now, those are all the steps, and I'm gonna sum them up for you right now. Step one, check out your credit score and get an idea of which loan program may be best for you. Step two, make sure you have that money for the down payment, and that's gonna be anywhere from three to 5% of the purchase price, plus two to 5% of the loan amount for the closing cost. Step three, get that pre-approval so you can go see those houses before and when they get on the market. Step four is to get an agent or myself <laughs> to help you get a house in the terms that you want, in the price you want, and that is going to work for your best interest. Thanks for following with me throughout this scramble of a video and hearing about what you need to buy a house in today's market. And I hope all the tips and tricks were helpful in this video and that you have a great time and have a great adventure in finding your next house. Have a great day guys and remember to follow me and change housing one life at a time.